This is the technical difficulties we're playing Citation Needed. Joining me today, he reads books, you know it's Chris Joel. I've still not put it together in the right order. I'll try for the second show. <laughs> Everybody's favourite, Gary Brannan. Gary Brannan. Get out of my office! <laughs> I'm standing in for Matt Gray, the mouth from the south. Will Seward. I have indeed eaten Matt. <laughs> <laughs> In front of me, I have an article from Wikipedia, and these folks can't see it. Every fact they get right is a point and a ding. And a prize for particularly good answers, which is... Mystery Biscuits! And today we are talking about the Stevens Island Wren. A uh, person in the, in the Lady Navy. This is really tough, the Lady <laughs> oh, God. Navy. The Lady <laughs> Navy. <laughs> Just for those who don't have their, their British naval history there, the Lady Navy? <laughs> that was like a car at the start of a Formula One race, just stalling on the start line. <laughs> dunk, dunk. Uh, uh, women's... I can't remember the acronym. I get the E. The, is it just Women's Royal Navy? Is that it? There's Women, no E. Yeah, Women's Royal Naval yeah. Service, the Rens. Rens, there we go. Uh, Woof! <laughs> well, that's the 1940s, isn't it? Because there's no such thing now. Uh, yes, you're absolutely right. Uh, it was 1993, apparently, when uh, when it all got uh, got unified. Uh, it, this has nothing to do with the Stevens Island Wren, but as a, as a cheap joke that started the show, well <laughs> yeah, done. Well done. <laughs> uh, is it a bird? <laughs> I should have gone with plane first. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is it from Stevens Island? I mean, how the frig is he getting points as easy as that this time? He's new. <laughs> Let him off. <laughs> Is there a Wikipedia article about it? I mean, that is the no, point of the no. show. That is, that is, uh, <laughs> genus troglodytes. Genus troglodytes? No. What? Not oh, this I am time. offended. Tro uh, what's, I'm having to look this up. A common wren's troglodytes, troglodytes. So I thought if it was a wren, it would probably troglodytes somatelsius. All right, what we have here I is Chris Joel, ornithologist. <laughs> when I say ornith, you say ologist. Ornith. 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 Ologist. No. First time that's ever been used right, though. Because usually I have a clue. <laughs> well, in this case, unfortunately, uh, you are wrong. The Eurasian wren is troglodytis, troglodytis. This is the Stevens Island wren, Traversia liali. Does it go through French alleyways? <laughs> Le alley. Le oh alley. Oh. Well, I mean, I, you have slotted into, into Matt's, Matt's seat just <laughs> perfectly. Oh, when, when I ate him, I stole his powers. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it works. You, were, you actually had a buzz cut, didn't you, before you yeah, went yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Man was clean shaven and five foot one. <laughs> <laughs> the Stevens Island Wren, gentlemen, a, so, a long time so ago. So far, we've, we've established it's a bird on Stevens Island. That's yes, a Wren, where, basically, where haven't we? Is Steve, well, it's last refuge was Stevens Island. Was it on the run for a horrific crime it committed? <laughs> <laughs> was this its last stand? No, no, it had three other friends, though, and they drove around in a black and red van, and if you needed their help, you know, <laughs> you they'd save the sparrows fun. and shit. Who would miss the TB? What, what sort of bird? Team. Well, they wouldn't fly, would they? So it'd be off like an ostrich or a penguin. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was good, I like Ga that. Gary, yeah. unbelievably, you no, have wait, a point. No, no, oh. no. <laughs> because the Stevens Island wren is flightless, and I'm giving you a point for that. As it learned not to fly since being on Stevens Island, it being an island, or did it get there on a raft? I like the idea of learning not to fly. No, <laughs> shit, I've flown again! I wish I could forget well, this bollocks. <laughs> maybe it didn't like it, maybe it didn't like heights. Yeah, but that's not forgetting, is it? That's proactively. Is there a difference, though, like between actively forgetting and unlearning? Welcome to epistemology today. <laughs> <laughs> Today, bird that don't fly. You forget, or did he learn it? <laughs> it's also known as Lyle's Wren. Why would its last refuge be Stevens Island? Is it extinct? Spot okay. On. Was it delicious? Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> that, that much faster. Uh, uh, yes, but not. I mean, this is a wren. Uh, yes, yes, but, but no. no. I mean, it was apparently delicious. There were only ever been five species of flightless songbirds found. What's happened to them? They've all They're... been eaten. Huh. <laughs> For the Stevens Island Wren in particular, by what? Was it eaten by pests that were introduced by humings? Yes, hey! absolutely right. Any particular pest? Rats. <laughs> Bring me another plate of wrens. <laughs> Conserve them that I may consume them for because that's what Bill Oddie sounds we're, like. We're in trouble the when scenes. the audience have better gags than we are. <laughs> as, as Bill Oddie sits in the ruined wasteland of the island, seeing the last little wren enter his lips, he goes, I really should have saved these. <laughs> <laughs> yes! <laughs> 
Uh, you didn't see nothing. <laughs> not rats. Cats. Yes, cats is technically correct. Could we be a bit more specific? Panthers. <laughs> <laughs> well, a I've just got this thing of just being in like a hotel room in a, in a lonely kind of guest house and suddenly from inside the cupboard hearing you saying that <laughs> and it being the most terrifying thing I can imagine. Panthers. <laughs> A single cat from one ship's crew. Absolutely oh, right. A lighthouse keeper's cat named Tibbles. <laughs> yeah, allegedly a lighthouse keeper's cat named Tibbles, and for a while that was the accepted wisdom. What is more likely? More than one cat. Panthers. <laughs> Chris is trying to Chris, uh, Chris get the point. Yes, a larger number of feral cats had come to overrun the island. How many... Living wrens were actually spotted. None. They're not. E they're, they're not spotted at all. They've got sort of That's vertical stripe. striations or stripes. <laughs> Go on, just hit me. Yeah, no, it's, 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 not, it's, it's not that. It's just you're kind of right. Yes. <laughs> uh, olive brown plumage with uh, with edges of brown. So I'll actually give you give you the stripes there. Uh, how often were they seen by humans? Seconds after the end of the cat's mouth, probably. Or when, <laughs> yeah, there was when the cat's left in a pile on the doormat. <laughs> yeah. The cat's first saying, I'm friends with you by leaving dead bodies outside. And when I do it, it's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Never. They were so small, they were essentially invisible. <laughs> I, I mean, I like it. <laughs> what you've got there, mate, are bees. Uh, <laughs> bees? Birds, and the next part of the talk is where it gets distressed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, only twice. The lighthouse keeper uh, called it almost nocturnal, running round the rocks like a mouse. Yeah, well, you would be being chased by a friggin' cat. <laughs> yes, that was, that was the problem. Then the cats ate the lighthouse keepers. Then the cats took over the lighthouse and turned off the light. Many ships were wrecked. <laughs> and eaten! The, those crews also were devoured. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you've got a good ghost story there. It's, it's complete bollocks, it's but you've got a great <laughs> ghost story there. <laughs> it was once widespread throughout the area. What area is Stevens Island in? Where are we going to... The sea! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, technically, I'm going to give you a point for that, <laughs> but which part of the world? This is 1870s. New England. No. Nova you've, Scotia? I mean, you've, you've said new... Can you new. make anything not sound kinky? <laughs> <laughs> you've said new, you've said Nova. New is correct. Zealand. Yes, there we go, I have a point. Prehistorically, uh, it was all through New Zealand, uh, then the land was settled. Uh, its bones can be found where? Capu. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, that's true. You, you, I mean, half I love when you leave me on like a primary school teacher with the thick students. <laughs> You're right. Are there any other answers in the class? <laughs> um, deposits left by laughing owls. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Was that an impression or a reaction? <laughs> <laughs> It's the this darkly humoured owl in a tree watching all these birds get in, all these wrens getting in going, ha ha ha, losers. <laughs> yeah, well, what happened to the laughing owl? Did they get eaten next? Yes, they did. <laughs> <laughs> Not laughing now, are we? I was actually going to move on to Yay. other extinct birds of New Zealand. Well, there's the mower and there's that really fecking big eagle that's the biggest one that ever lived. How, how, it starts with an H. Oh, I can't remember. New Zealand big fecking big <laughs> eagle. Come on, come on. Harst sea Yes! Oh, <laughs> bless her. The wonders of technology. That's a terrifying thought that technology might be optimised to how I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the rest of you are screwed. <laughs> Talking about introducing pests. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there have been many, many attempts to deal with pests, particularly Australia and New Zealand. They're not pests, they're legitimate countries. We had words about this before. <laughs> oh! uh, yes, what can you tell me about the rabbit-proof fence? It wasn't rabbit-proof. <laughs> hey! Because they went under it. Uh, yes, they, it, it turns out that, uh, that building a fence was not a great way to stop rabbits. Uh, Did they get in in the hats of magicians? Yes! <laughs> <laughs> to pull out flags of all nations, it's just loads of rabbits tied together. <laughs> With the flags of all nations. With the flags it's, between actually, them. it's actually the rabbits of all nations. So just <laughs> heavily tattooed. <laughs> yeah. What can you tell me about the cobra effect? And the phrasing here is, it illustrates the causes of incorrect stimulation in the economy. 
Hey, kids. <laughs> right, is it to do with sales of Viagra? Yeah. <laughs> um, they introduced so cobras, but they're all dead straight now. Oh, no, it, it's... <laughs> <laughs> Flinging them like javelins. Come on! <laughs> How you do it is your own business. <laughs> <laughs> Where might this have been? India. Yes, you, you, despite the phrase, you are, you are absolutely right. This, this was British colonial India. And they were concerned about venomous snakes, cobras. What did they try to do to, to solve the snake problem? Did they bribe them? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, set up an elaborate passport service that, that yeah. they couldn't move from place you to know, place. That, that thing was like, oh, he's got it, he's got it, he's got it. No. Oh. To be fair, he's got it was, did they? And then he's not was, bribe? Did they bribe the snake charmers? Uh, ca people to catch them. And then they wouldn't get rid of them all because if they got rid of them all, they wouldn't have an income, so they bred snakes to make sure they still had a... a, a solid hey, I know that. Because that was a common thing, uh, sort of 17, you know, 16th, 17th century, you have accounts of what they do in parishes, and they have similar problems with beavers. You would bring the tails to show that you had caught the pests, so you had, mm. you also had beetles that would get rid of dogs, things mm. like that, out of churches. But they were, there were rumours that they would be potentially breeding animals to make sure they were still getting paid for this little bit of income, so it was a similar thing. Uh, yes, they offered a bounty for every dead cobra, which worked. Then people started breeding cobras, so they scrapped the bounty programme. What happened? Lots of snakes. I, I mean, yes, everyone released the cobras. <laughs> yeah. Because they were now worthless. So when they, just... they did it, did they use the... Pro this, actually, this needs your voice to say yeah, this, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, release yeah. the cobras, shall it? Release the cobras. <laughs> that is good. Good Lord, I, I'm involuntarily picking my feet up off the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Panthers. <laughs> No, that's clearly a Disney panther, though. That is going to be smoking a pipe and asking insightful <laughs> questions, a panther introduced in that tone. I can never go to the zoo. <laughs> that's different reasons, though, to do with the throw it chucking the cobras. <laughs> I'm just going to go, panthers. <laughs> Uh, so, so to drag this back, to drag this back <laughs> a long, long way to the Stevens Island Wren. Oh, Jesus oh, Christ! <laughs> <laughs> um, there were some fights over the specimens. Between the cats, obviously, because they were hungry. <laughs> the thing is, you're actually right, because almost all the specimens now extant were brought in by cats. Oh, as presents. Oh. As presents for the lighthouse keeper, you're absolutely right. Oh, although they're not presents, they're, they're sort of a, a mark of pity. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's that kind of, look, that's how you do it, isn't it? It's the kind of thing <laughs> yeah. they're showing you. It's like when they shit on the floor, it's to show they're angry. <laughs> it's true. It's, it, 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 you, but, that's what happened when you came to my house. What, you shits on the floor because you were angry he was there? <laughs> <laughs> Do you Out, Scott! <laughs> he went stayed over at my house. I did. I, God, that was before your stag do, wasn't it? Yeah. You stayed over at my house. I just had this immortal phrase of, Gary, the cat shits on the floor. Oh, I have no memory of this yeah, that happened, at that all. Happened. It's the only time she's ever done it with another person in the house. Normally we get it after a weekend away or something. A day or so later, she's just going like, you know, lay one on the, on the floor to say, damn it, you've been away and this is how angry I am. I'm going to let you see this. So for some reason, she took umbrage with you to that degree that she did a massive dump in protest. And when I do it, it's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> On the other hand, I know exactly how my resignation from the show is going to go, <laughs> should it go back. <laughs> so, yes, what happened to, to most of the specimens? Where did they end up? Museums! Yes, absolutely right. What happened to most of the cats? Museum. <laughs> Hooray! <laughs> <laughs> Shot, sadly, but uh, <laughs> oh. uh, and there was there was there was oh, a I like this one when it ends on dead cats. Yeah, well, no, good there, fun, and that's the end of the show. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's not ending on that. There was a recommendation sent out. What should lighthouse keepers not do? Have cats to shoot in the first place. Yes, it was recommended they they not introduce pests. So the last the last question: Who was Lyle? Who were they named after? Lyle's wren, Traversia Leali. Was he the lighthouse keeper? Yes. Oh! yes! Hooray! So at the end of the show, <laughs> um, <laughs> congratulations, Chris. You win this one. <laughs> uh, you win a stuffed toy inspired by the villain from Nightmare on Elm Street. It's a Teddy Kruger. Oh. Hey! Hey! With that, we say thank you to Chris Joel, <laughs> to Gary Brennan, <laughs> to Will Seward. I've been Tom Scott. We'll see you next time. Can I really go this yes. Guy?